We are live. We're live, teachers. We are live. The worst listeners. I love that it took a minute for teachers to pipe down. Welcome. Welcome to our Monday, May 23rd, 2022 school board meeting. Um, I'd like to call this meeting to order, and Lisa, will you please call the roll? Inspector Weber? Here. Inspector Laliberti? Here. Inspector Ahrens? Here. Inspector Felton? Here. Inspector Walker? Here. Inspector Rosh? Yep, here. Chair Diaz? Here. That's seven presents. Great, thank you. I'll rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great, thank you. All right, let's get through this part quickly. First up is the approval of our meeting agenda and minutes. I'm looking for a motion yeah. to approve our meeting agenda for tonight, as well as the minutes from our uh, Committee of the Whole, Meeting May 9th, 2022, and our school board meeting minutes from May 9th, 2022. Do I have a motion? So, so moved. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? And then all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> and that motion carries. And on to uh, our report section and quality in action. And tonight, we are honored to have teachers here with us tonight. This is so exciting. So, uh, hey, who's gonna, who's gonna start, start us off? We are gonna let, uh, we're gonna go not in any order of importance. So we just thought to, Whoops. no, I'm sorry. We, you know, we debated like, what order do you go? Everybody's equally important. So we just decided to go in order of our students age as we go through oh, the, the folks who you know, we want to honor. Yeah, director, we go from zero to the, the other <laughs> side. Right, the other so. side. So she could bookend us on that one, right? Yeah. Um, on behalf of the community ed department, uh, as a director of community ed, I'm happy to be here. Uh, thank you, Dr. Zambrino, board members. Um, we have two um, staff in our community ed department that will be honored tonight. I have my friend here, Patty uh, Cooper, who has been with us in our early learning uh, ECFE uh, program as a parent educator for the last 25 years. Um, one of her favorite memories, as you know, in your, with your community ed department, we like to move around, and Patty has been through about eight or nine moves with us and has still stayed with, yes. but have landed, and thank you for the beautiful early learning center where um, her magic takes place every day. And one of uh, Patty's favorite uh, memories when we were talking about it was one of her first trainings in the district, and it was on how to use email, and the very first step was to learn how to actually turn on the computer. So we think we've come a long way. So uh, Patty, on behalf of the community ed department, we'd like to present this to you. Thank you so well, thank much you. for your service. Thank you. Lisa Fulmeyer Mars is the second community ed staff person who has been with the district for 25 years. Um, she started in the lunchroom at Lincoln Center, was a crossing guard at Kaposia, um, and came to work for Kids Choice about 10 years ago in our before and after school program. Um, she is like the master craft uh, person in our school age care program. She can get any one of the kiddos to engage even when they don't want to in an arts and crafts project. It has built a lot of great relationships with the kids over the years. And one of the fun facts, which I thought this was really kind of crazy, but kind of cool, is that uh, she likes to pet bu bumblebees. She no longer holds them, but she still likes to pet them. So, <laughs> really thank you so much for recognizing our staff. She's the bumblebee whisperer. Good evening, you guys. How's evening. everybody doing? Uh, here with me tonight is Linda Stein, and Linda brought her own cheering squad. I think she has three people in the crowd. <laughs> Fantastic. This is kind of how she rolls through the halls, too. She has her own group that just kind of <laughs> cheers for her every place she goes. Um, Linda uh, is one of our special education paras. She's on her 25th year. 
Uh, 25 years ago, she was hired as a lunchroom supervisor, and she says how she got hired was that on New Year's Eve day, she got a phone call. It was a Wednesday. She had an interview for Friday. They were calling people on New Year's Eve day, by the way, back then. <laughs> so finding people to work in our schools was difficult back then, right, if they're calling you on New Year's Eve day. Uh, she had an interview on Friday, and she started work on Monday, and she's been there ever since. Uh -huh. So she is as dependable, as trustworthy, as dedicated. Uh, as positive a person that you could ever want working in your building. So we wanna thank her for that. She uh, is also an avid sports fan and she needs that positivity to be a Minnesota sports fan, don't you? <laughs> yes, I said, I asked her what has made her time so special at Composia and she said, said something really interesting. It was about how things have changed over time. And so often we hear about the good old days and the traditional ways and there is some benefit to that. But what I got from her was all the new things that she's learned about how kids learn. And she works with special education kids who have a lot of needs, and she finds different ways to fill those needs every single year. She's always reinventing herself. So I wanna thank her for, uh, again, her endless positivity and just being uh, a staple at Kaposia. I always talk about uh, people who have been there since the building um, had been opened, and I feel like they are uh, foundation of brick. So when she does retire, which will be another 25 years, she just told me, um, there will be a brick there with Linda Stein's name on it. So I want to thank you. Thank you, Linda, for your time. And this is for you, by the way. Good evening, school board and Dr. Zambrino. I am Teresa Starkman from Lincoln Center, and I have a whole slew of people I get to talk about tonight, which I'm really excited about. So I'm gonna start with our 25 year employees. Um, both Kim Bauer and Arlene McAlpine are celebrating 25 years of service to South St. Paul schools. They both teach second grade at Lincoln Center and part of an amazing grade level team. Both are tremendous leaders and give beyond the school day. They are kind, organized and loving teachers who create inclusive learning environments for their students. Kim Bauer was a distance learning teacher during COVID and even through a computer screen, she ensured students had the interventions they needed to be successful in school. She taught parents how to do specific interventions, adding another layer of support for students. Her students showed up every day for distance learning. In addition to being an outstanding elementary teacher, Kim supported our older students and was the student council advisor for many years. Kim, we thank you for your continued support and passion for South St. Paul schools. Arlene is calm and parents of students in her classroom speak to how well she makes connections with each student. She uses this knowledge to plan specifically for each student. In addition to being an outstanding second grade teacher, Arlene is also a leader on Lincoln Center's building instruction and leadership team, and she also co-leads the teacher relicensure committee. We thank you, Arlene, for your continued support and passion for South St. Paul Schools. So now I'm gonna move into talking about some of uh, our retirements tonight. Or, um, Kelly Tetrick, um, oh. <laughs> it's fun to have a friend and a colleague. Um, Kelly began her career in education as a special education paraprofessional in 1999. Then she worked as a student behavior support, a teacher, and most recently spending 11 years as the director of special services. Her love for her work was evident in all she did each day. Her fun facts is that Kelly and her husband will spend time at their cabin taking endless pontoon boat rides, which is her favorite. We talk a lot about boats. Um, recently, her son got engaged and her daughter moved back to Minnesota. So she and her husband will be busy spending lots of time with their family. They love to travel and plan on going on a lot more traveling now that she's retired. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you for your visual presence in all South St. Paul buildings. One of the things staff love most about you was their that you were easy accessible, that people come to you and talk to you anytime that you were out, you were visible. This showed your deep support in all areas of um, student services. Thank you for your love of your job and for your commitment to an inclusive education for all students. Thank you personally for being a mentor to me and the knowledge I've gained from working with you continues to impact my career as an administrator. We are forever grateful for your 23 years of service. Mm -hmm. I just want to say uh, thank you to the Board of Education, the community of South St. Paul. Um, it was truly an honor and a privilege 
uh, to advocate for students with disabilities and uh, we'll continue to do that in the future as a community member as well. So uh, thank you to every one of you. You're welcome. Thank you. The next person I have the privilege of honoring is Eileen O'Rourke. Um, she's not here with us this new evening, but she began her career in South St. Paul at Lincoln Center Elementary School. She has been in her current position as administrative assistant for the special services department for the last 15 years. Eileen gives 110%. She works beyond her scheduled hours, has immense knowledge of special services, all to keep the special services department organized and running smoothly. Those of us who worked with Eileen were able to experience her outstanding sense of humor. Nothing makes your day brighter than Eileen's laughter and smile. Her fun facts is Eileen and her husband recently purchased a cabin and look forward to spending lots of time during her retirement with her children and her grandchildren. We th thank Eileen for her continued dedication to South St. Paul and wish her well in her retirement. And next, next is um, Lynn Meyer and Joe Bruff. I guess they're coming together. They're both 36 <laughs> years. So. <laughs> All right, so Lynn and Joe are both finishing their 36th year. Wow. She has spent that time as an occupational therapist in South St. Paul. While well, those years have been an early childhood special ed, I want you to know that Lynn considers her students her family. And she continues supporting students in kindergarten and in first grade and second grade. So anytime we have a kiddo who's having a little bit of a challenge or needs some extra support, we can call on Lynn to come to a school conference or have a special meeting with families. Sometimes they find me. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> um, she's excited, always excited about her work. She's very excited about retirement, but says it's bittersweet because of how much she loves what she does. Fun fact about Lynn is she's looking forward to no clocks. She said summer will feel endless. She and her husband have a trip planned in September, and being retired means you can travel whenever you want. They're going to be taking a riverboat biking trip from Amsterdam to Budapest. Oh, Is that right? fabulous. So thank you, Lynn, for the joy you bring to the job, for your continued support of elementary students and early childhood special ed students, and for all your expertise in finding the right strategies that make a student's day successful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. South St. Paul for 36 years. His love for music is evident in every music class he teaches. He instills a passion for music in the students, and he's always willing to help, whether it's something I ask for, like music over the loudspeaker, for an event we're doing in school, or providing students with instruments to lead the paraprofessional day parade. Joe is always willing to pitch in and help. In addition to the school day music classes, he also teaches our after school choir experience, the troublemakers, for fourth and fifth grade students. Fun fact, Joe is looking forward to a more peaceful lifestyle. He will be traveling more in his airplane, helping his wife spend her inheritance, <laughs> spending time with their first grandchild, continuing as the music director at St. Lawrence Catholic Church, and will continue playing in his group, the Backyard Band. He will also continue helping his mom manage her six rental houses, and he says that's a more peaceful lifestyle. <laughs> Thank you, Joe, for all your years of service and commitment to South St. Paul Schools. Thank you for bringing music to the students at Lincoln Center and for being an integral part of the Lincoln Center staff. And last but not least is Joanne Schneider. Um, Joanne Schneider is an early childhood special ed paraprofessional. Um, I had the pleasure of hiring Joanne. Joanne Schneider is, um, works at Lincoln Center. She is a most amazing paraprofessional. She is extremely patient and willing to support wherever she's needed. She loves the students and they love her right back. Her fun fact is that all three of her sons are expecting their first babies this summer, and that's why she's <laughs> retiring, so she can stay home and take care of those grandbabies. So thank you, Joanne, for your service to South St. Paul Schools. Enjoy your retirement, Joanne, because being a grandparent is the best. Hmm. Good evening, Dr. Zambrino, school board, uh, greater school community. My name is Chuck Ochaki, and I'm proud to be the principal of South St. Paul High School. 
Uh, today, I, I'm going to honor uh, four teachers who have 25 years of service as of this year. I'm going to ask Joe Burke to come forward. Oh. <laughs> nice job, Joe. <laughs> Way to read my mind like that. So uh, it's, amazingly, uh, it's amazing to know that Joe has been working for 25 years in our district. He started when he was 18. Uh, that, that didn't go very well. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Not his joke, it was mine. All right. Uh, <laughs> I asked him what is one of his best experiences, and Joe is a, a science teacher who has gone uh, middle school, high school, middle school, high school, right? And so I just said, hey, what's one of your best experiences? And he shared that when he first started, his first three years, he was uh, in the middle school and he was in a core, and he was with a, a group of teachers who were mixed. They had no experience to 30 plus years of experience uh, in, that, in that group. And uh, they had a great deal of trust in, in, in each other, and they really worked hard to, to make the experience better for their kids, uh, which led to, uh, you know, really met a, a lot of great times in and out of school, Friday morning treats, which he actually shared was probably the first team meetings, right? You had bar meetings way before bar was even introduced, right? Uh, the first bar meetings where he learned more about the practical lessons of being a teacher than all the college cor courses put together, right, just from that group of teachers. So... I did ask him, like, what's something that he enjoys? And I know you're not going to believe this, right? But he actually said, uh, I've enjoyed working with all the great administrators. <laughs> 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 Teachers, support staff, and students who have been a part of my career here at South St. Paul. And I'm going to just tell you, uh, Joe and I have known uh, each other a long time. Uh, and, and I appreciate <coughs> Joe because he's one of those, when you're a teacher and you you're not sure if the lesson's going well or not. There are a couple students in your class that you can kind of look at, and that's what Joe is for me. If, if I'm not sure where the staff is at, I can really easily walk up to his classroom, close the door, and say, <laughs> help me, <laughs> or whatever it is, right? So I really appreciate Joe uh, for all of his years of services and, and have enjoyed uh, getting to know him and, and continue to getting to know him as we uh, welcome him back to the high school next year full time. So thank you, Joe. Thanks. Thanks. Yes. Uh, the other three teachers uh, or uh, employees couldn't be here, and so I just want to thank Tammy Lenars for all her he uh, years of service, 25 years as both a PE and health teacher, but also a peer coach. Uh, and one of the things that I really appreciate about her is uh, her willingness to give back constantly uh, and, and is trying her best to, to help teachers become better <coughs> as a peer coach. Uh, Carol Journey, who is our ESL uh, teacher this year at the high school, but has been <coughs> across the district uh, I, I love going into her classroom because the uh, learning that's going on in there, is, it's so exciting to watch. She works with kids who uh, sometimes have just landed in, in St. Paul and have, are coming to us for the first time with no English. And to watch them excel and, and uh, grow in her classroom and under her wing. And, and really, they, the kids call her uh, like their second mom. Uh, all the time because she's always watching out for him. And then Chad Sexauer is the third employee who's not here. He's actually uh, doing his other job, which is an AD. And he was a social studies teacher, an AD, uh, AP, and a coach. And there, you know, when I asked him to think about, like, what, what the last 25 years have meant to him, he just said there are way too many uh, cool things that have happened in his lifetime that he couldn't actually just zero in on one. So those are the, the high school 25 years. And now it's I'd like to honor Randy Bjorklin, uh, who is retiring uh, this year. And this is uh, bittersweet for me, right? Because... Um, <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, that's the moment I needed right there. Uh, he coached my son for one year in wrestling, and I asked Tomas, uh, hey, what do you think of Mr. Bjorklin? And he said, he's the bomb. Mm -hmm. The bomb, <laughs> right? Uh, it, it, but what he said was, Randy, uh, Mr. Bjorklin um, knows how to teach everyone and knows how to reach everyone. And so in his time here, I mean, he has been uh, the, mainly a Phi Ed teacher in the high school with some Dave classes, but mainly in the, in the high school. And he's worked with a ton of people. He and Jeff Legue have shared a half time, <laughs> half a lifetime working in the pack together, right? Well, what I think about Randy, I think about uh, the other part of his job, which takes a lot of time, too, and that's coaching. You know, for 14 years, he was the head football coach, and 17 years, he was an assistant. And he was the head track coach for 23 years, an assistant for nine years, 
right, in assistant wrestling for 10 years, right? And when you think about all the lives that you have touched, not only in the classroom, but on the field, on the court, and on the track, right? That's a lot of lives, Mr. Baum, right? That's a <laughs> lot of lives. And so uh, the really proud moment, though, is be besides he's retiring, right, is that he has three sons who all graduated from South St. Paul. So, Randy, I just want you to know that we are going to miss you a ton. Uh, I'm going to miss you a ton. And <laughs> that's, that's what I was hoping for, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's something uh, hot. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I want to I wish you the best Thank of you. luck. Thank you. Yes. You want to say it? Too? Hi, good evening. Thank you to Dr. Zambrino and the South St. Paul School Board. Um, I am here to announce the retiree for South St. Paul's Community Learning Center. I have the privilege to announce John Skog's retirement here. Um, he ends up not being here tonight. He is coaching Little League right now. And so that leads into some of the things that he's going to be doing in his retirement. But John has been a teacher for 38 years. Most of that has been done in the private sector, but he spent his last 10 years in South St. Paul teaching students at the Community Learning Center. He was a pioneer in how we ended up, ended up building our credit recovery options for students. And so we were trying to find ways to build things during the school day, and he was a leader in, in getting that movement started. So we wish John the best of luck in his retirement. Him and his wife, Barb, are gonna be full-time grandparents to their five kids, and he's gonna enjoy his hiking and biking and going all over the place and end up doing a lot of the coaching that he, he has really wanted to do, and now this frees up a lot of time for that. So he's not here tonight, but please join me in a round of applause for John Skull. Good evening. Brady Hoffman, Director of Finance, um, and I get the honor of recognizing Nancy Carlson. She was our payroll coordinator for 15 years. Pretty close. Um, her and I only had a little bit of time to work together um, as I'm newer to the district, but uh, it's funny, payroll is like its own language. Um, so her and I had a good time getting to know each other and working through um, you know, learning how each other operates and um, getting acclimated to the district. Uh, so she was committed and um, reliable and um, you know, we were grateful for all her years of service. Um, she is in her retirement, uh, continuing to work um, at the Dairy Queen down in Lake City where they still make their own dilly bars on site. Mm. So wow. uh, definitely something to stop by and visit. Um, but uh, truly grateful for the time we had to work together. We're truly appreciative of all the work um, that you did to support the district. Uh, congratulations on your retirement. Good evening, school board. Dr. Zimbri. Um, I'm here to recognize th uh, three staff members, uh, Byron Anderson, Sherry Diedrich, and uh, Tom Banaduski. Byron, or, yeah, Byron Anderson worked as a part-time cleaner since 2015 at the secondary building. He loves Minnesota Twins and the wild, and he loves the outdoors. Um, Byron's always willing to help others, and his family is very important to him. His quality, quality of work, his attention to details, and dedication to the school district will be missed. Thank you and congratulations, Byron, on your retirement. Uh, Sherry uh, Dietrich has uh, been a part-time cleaner since 2010 at the secondary building. Uh, the teachers in her area love Sherry. She keeps their, their, her, their space nice and clean for them and uh, she always goes the extra mile. Um, Sherry uh, has rarely missed any days over the years. Um, uh, she's a grandmother and plans to spend more time with her grandkids. Thank you, and congratulations on your retirement. <laughs> Tom Banaduski started in, with the district in 1997. Tom's the district carpenter. His duties consist of carpentry, which he's at, outstanding at. Uh, he's a locksmith, does furniture assembly, electrical, to name a few. Uh, Tom is our go-to handyman for anything we need. So uh, Tom's worth ethic, attention to detail, dedication, quality of work is unmatched. Thank you, Tom, for 25 years of service. Yes. Dr. 
Reno School Board. I'm Dory Pavel. I'm the Assistant Director for Nutrition Services. And I'm here today to recognize Deb Schultz for her, uh, on her retirement. Deborah Schultz has been with the South St. Paul School District and the Nutrition Service Department for almost 27 years. During that time, she has had the unique opportunity to see and feed many of the students grades 6 through 12 every day. Deb has a gift of learning and remembering names. She has used that gift to make sure students know that she cares. With a simple smile and the saying of their name, Deb's impact goes beyond words. During the pandemic, when we did not see students every day, Deb would always be sure to greet students by name when they came to pick up box meals and ask how they were doing. Watching those types of interactions has been priceless. It's, it, it's those little things that she has done to make a profound impact on many. I wanna say thank you, thank you, thank you for all that Deb has done, for all that she has done to make a difference in the lives of so many individuals in our schools and communities. We are grateful for the time Deb has spent with the district and in the nutrition services department and we wish her nothing but the best on her retirement. She will be greatly missed. All right, I think that kicks over to me for just a couple more. Um, I have the privilege of honoring a couple of our retirees who left uh, before I got started. So. Uh, Connie Garling Squire is one. She has uh, had served in the district for about 35 years, and I'm looking at her list of, uh, it's too many to read all the spots she was, but she did start, she said, at, uh, as a second grade teacher at Roosevelt Computer Lab School, which is now the tennis courts, I guess, on Fifth Avenue, so a little history lesson there, uh, but held uh, classroom teacher, assistant principal, principal, Title I coordinator, and then retired as uh, Director of Learning and Equity. I did get to see her last meeting with our um, Native American, American Indian families honoring her and just did get to see a little bit of that impact she had. Uh, her plans, why she's not able to be with us, she moved to Ireland. And so uh, she and her husband are building their dream home on the Western Shores, and they are creating a permaculture, which I gotta go Google myself, and organic Blue and Cranberry Farm, complete with ponds, water lilies, dragonflies, and runner ducks. I also don't know what runner ducks are, so I'm intrigued <laughs> what she's doing. So lots of fun things there. Um, she said on her first uh, day of teaching in the, in the district, her principal, Mary Jane Moran, stopped and asked her how things were going, and she said, I'm home. And so she um, spent her career here uh, making lots of contributions, and so I want to acknowledge her. And then I also have the privilege of acknowledging Dr. Dave Webb. Um, Dave is traveling today, or I, I know he would love to be here. He'll be at our end of year gathering, but uh, spent almost 12 years in the district. Um, things he's really proud of is just that working together partnership, really focused on collaborating together for great things for the kids of South St. Paul. Um, passing a construction bond, learning levy, and tech levy, always a challenging task. and leads to so many great things, so great work on those pieces. Um, added a collaborative learning structure and extended planning time through the ATPPS program. Uh, actually been able to listen to some of the great work our PLCs have been doing. They're sharing that as an end of year activity, so proud to get that together. Also the tri-district work, uh, the career pathways and programs within our tri-district partnership. And then the years of just getting the, the district up to uh, speed with technology and how important that was uh, during the pandemic to, to help everybody shift to the technology-based uh, pandemic teaching and learning model. So uh, congratulations to, to Dr. Webb. So a little bit earlier, the board was joking about not wanting to be in the spotlight. And there is a whole list of people here on this agenda and the faces that I'm looking at, except for maybe Mr. Ochaki, who never want to be in the spotlight. You always are putting your students first um, or your product, whether it's payroll, the meals you serve, or the building itself. And we know that that's what you want to put first, right? Never yourselves. So tonight, I think, for just one minute, if you'll allow us to let you be in the spotlight, 
and uh, accept this little applause. Oh, yes. the best mm -hmm. yeah board anything else there is life after education <laughs> and just know it's fabulous <laughs> so the career is great but so is retirement <laughs> Can't wait. Well, and from what I've seen there's always reasons that retirees come back to the schools to do things so always remember you're always welcome to uh, come back and visit Hey, there will be four spots open on this board. Hey, there we go. Yeah. Here. Water's four fine. Spots. <laughs> I think Nikki's already picked you out. <laughs> Thank you for all you've done. I so appreciate all your work. You, yes. you, you can feel free to leave. We know you have a whole life. A whole life to get started on. And summer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was awesome. No that was so awesome. I think it's so cool that we even honor no one. No one spoke about her. That Woolhamman, she was not. We pulled her off. She was last year. Oh, she was last year. Oh, she was last year. Okay, now I feel better. <laughs> it was me wanting to save, save money and not drink her. I get it. I get it. Strong Thank uh, you. fiscal steward over here, right? <laughs> impressive, though, Nikki. I'm impressed. Right. Well, well, I detail. checked them off. They're almost the detail. Make sure everybody out. got Right? I mean, nothing worse than missing somebody, yeah. right? All right. So, on to um, some business items. Um... Public listening session, uh, no public listening session submissions again this week. Um, and then Vice Chair Rosh, if you could just highlight the Committee of the Whole meeting that we had earlier. Sure. Um, so as we've stated before, we have Committee of the Whole meetings um, frequently in advance of our public meeting. Those are also open to the public, um, and that's where a lot of our uh, work is discussed. Um, we were checking in with each other on the various committees that we sit on and in the time that we serve outside of the uh, meetings that we have as a board as a whole. Um, and then we have begun some discussions in related to student meals and fees and then some kind of long-term financial discussions for the district. And um, just in uh, scope of full transparency, we are still ongoing with that discussions um, and had to... Um, kind of hold the meeting, and that meeting will continue after the board meeting tonight as well. Great. Thank you for that. And then Dr. Zambrino. All right. Thank highlights. you, Chair Diaz. Always great things going on around the district, so fun to highlight some of those. Um, we are, it's just amazing how fast we're coming up against summer. I think Joel's getting the door, so. <laughs> I love the sound of people celebrating the retirement, so it doesn't bug me at all, but no. thank you, Joel, it's for. Like the room is full of people. <laughs> um, Oh, looks like it can't be. Okay, all right, I will continue. So, yes, uh, summer's right around the corner. Great thing to see that um, with funding through the U.S. Department of Agriculture, our district is able to offer free meals to all children ages 1 through 18 uh, for the summer. And the free meals will be available at the secondary building in Kaposia Monday to Thursday from uh, breakfast from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. and then lunch 11.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. And then um, no meals will be served the week of July 4th, but uh, the vast majority of the summer, those meals are available. And then there are adult meals available as well um, for $3 for breakfast and $5 for lunch. Fair for all, we've highlighted that before uh, at Central Square. So um, great opportunity to get a good deal on some nutritious and delicious food. We know that food is, uh, we were talking about that before the meeting started, how expensive food is getting. So. A good opportunity for folks to come and, and pick out some items. And that's on May 24th from 4 to 6 this week. So that will be tomorrow at Central Square. And then we have kindergarten camp for our incoming kindergartners. That's August 1st to 4th. And that runs 8.30 to 11 a.m. at Lincoln and 9 to 11.30 at Kaposia. 
Uh, more information available on our website at sspps.org uh, slash summer learning 2022. Uh, it gives students a chance to get familiar with the new school environment, uh, learn about bus safety and participating in some of the activities they'll be participating when they're in school. Uh, preschool registration is open, so ages 2.5, two and a half year old to four year olds. Uh, four year olds uh, preschool is free and scholarships are available for ages three and under. And that uh, information can be found at our website, um, sspps.org slash enroll. And then taking a quick look at some of the things happening around the uh, district, had a very fun visit to the preschool program at Kaposia. So got an invitation to come over and read The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Um, I'll, you know, classic, it's been a while. I used to read that to my own kids. So it was fun <laughs> to read to ours. You know, I, it's, um, it was also inspiring because we know we've talked about learning loss and all these things about the pandemic. And as I was thinking about that group of children, I was thinking, like here's a group that I hope has no memory of any of this and they're getting so well prepared for school. I mean, the kids were right on the spot, super respectful, well, you know, well prepared with school readiness. So uh, fun experience. And then today I had um, a thank you note or thank you cards, I guess, pictures from all the kids, rainbows and all this kind of, and you can see how hard it's just to make their name, you know, just that accomplishment of getting your name on the paper. So really fun. Um, last week we had a meet and greet uh, for the community at Central Square, so I was uh, there as well as a few of our boards, so um, Inspector Walker, Felton, and um, Weber were with me, and uh, it wasn't a, a huge turnout, but it was actually a great opportunity to sit and just go in a deep conversation about uh, parent perspective on things that are going well in the district and um, ideas for uh, where they'd like to see us go, and then we also had our ABE students there. So we were able to meet some of our English learner parents as well as, or not all parents, I shouldn't say, but some that were parents. Uh, one of them actually had shared that his daughter was a $20,000 scholarship winner at the scholarship That's banquet. Awesome. So he was just beaming as, That's and I thought how inspiring. He's there, right, learning English and or GED, I'm, it was his program actually, and then to know that his daughter got that scholarship. So what a neat That's thing. Cool. Um, so yeah, good, good meet and greet is just part of that ongoing engagement with the community as I started in the middle of the year. We then had also our academic awards um, last week on Friday. So for our 11th and 12th grade students, I recognized for being an NHS, so inductees and, and students finishing their uh, academic gold award seal, which was go, uh, given to all seniors who attended our high school and received a grade point average of 3.7 or above for each academic school year, 9, 10, and 11, and for uh, the first two trimesters of 12th grade. So an amazing accomplishment there. Also recognizing students for their language skills and getting the bilingual, multilingual seal, which if students attend uh, Minnesota State College System, they can actually get credit. Um, I know a lot of us would take language just to not have to take it, but they actually can get the credit. So. And to me, as a former EL teacher, I just, I love it because it's not just students, you know, like my own daughter who's doing very well in French, but students who came speaking another language, they get that honor um, and credit for what they have because that's a, a great asset for our students who are learning English but carried their native language with them. So really fun. And then uh, IB uh, Diploma Awards. And so um, to be eligible for IB recognition, the student had to test in four IB diploma program classes or test in three IB classes and take both levels of the theory of knowledge. So um, a lot of pieces there as well as the um, CAS program, the creativity <coughs> activity and service project over junior and senior year. So we know that there's you know a lot of rigor involved in the uh, IB program. So great to highlight those students as well. The scholarship banquet I just talked about, one of our winners, just amazing. Um, just want to make sure we give a shout out to our educational foundation, uh, giving almost a half a million dollars, 466,000, I think 600. I mean, just absolutely amazing. 133 of our seniors uh, got a, a scholarship and everyone who applied got one. And so it's just um, something we should be so proud of to shout it from the roof, rooftops that that opportunity is available to our scholars. Safe routes to schools, I uh, got to go visit with Mr. Britoy and our students. They were um, putting, instead of being able to put actual curb bump outs, which would be a very expensive investment, they were able to put the, the pylons in the ground and then paint 
bump out. So um, for those that maybe aren't familiar with those, it kind of makes you have to slow down and really pay attention as you're rounding a corner. Also uh, keeps parking further back. So if someone's crossing the street, the cars aren't right up there. If you've ever seen that, where your little one walks out. So, uh, but the kids got to paint the red. I think they thought, you know, they were getting away with something, getting to paint the, the street red. So uh, neat project um, in partnership with our Safe Routes to School. Um, just looking at what else on that. Oh, that's good. And then we got uh, the gardens in a box. So our second graders at Lincoln and Kaposia are learning how to plan to maintain vegetable gardens. So that came through the Minnesota State Horticultural Society. Um, and they're free garden kits that contain everything you need. So it's like a ready to go um, thing with the, um, the planter, the soil, the fertilizer, and then the vegetables and, and things that ready the seeds to plant. So. Um, on the 19th, the students planted those, and I'm sure we'll all be excited to see what grows over the, you know, especially if we keep getting the rain like we've had, hopefully they'll do very well. All right, and then we had an Osprey Wilds visit, so South St. Paul uh, Schools. Uh, let's see, that's the wrong information there. I apologize, I got the wrong information on that slide. Yeah, so that was through the Environmental Learning Center brought a field trip to Lincoln. So students were able to learn about amphibians and reptiles, and then all grades uh, participated throughout the day and had a chance to encounter the animals up close. I'm trying to see what kind of snake that would be. Does anyone know? God. I see Inspector Laliberti does not want to get that close <laughs> with any kind of snake. Not attending the uh, reptile. Uh, no, business. I was right? not attending that. <laughs> Uh, another neat event happened um, that had been happening before the pandemic had to pause with all the safety protocols, but we had um, an ASD cafe at Lincoln Center. So our uh, SUN program students, students with unique needs uh, program put it on and, and it's an opportunity for the kids to, um, like staff came, I came and they'll, you can buy, you know, chi well they had a breakfast one so you could buy like donuts or muffins a coffee and tea and the students are the cashiers and the runners and uh, get to have that experience of having a cafe that That's they're awesome. running and then they did another one at lunchtime so got to go to both of those and um, you know you could just see the pride they had you know getting to you know be in that role of uh, leadership so to speak so neat program and we had the fourth and fifth grade track meet in the middle of all this uh, crazy weather we've kind of had this spring we had a beautiful day um, for the kids to have the, the, the combined, so the fourth graders and fifth graders came up from Kaposia to Lincoln, and then they competed in various field events. And I mean, so much fun. As I was pulling into the parking lot, you could just hear the kids. I'm sure everybody around the city could like, what is going on? They were hooting and hollering and just cheering each other on. And I wished uh, Principal Stark when we're still here, because I was teasing her about how much fun she was having with that starting gun. You can see her there, so she'd call the start of the race and fire off the gun, so hopefully that didn't alarm anybody in the community, but really neat to see our kids just rooting each other on and, and having so much fun. Uh, this time of year, always thinking about that transition to next year, so our fifth graders at um, Kaposia and Lincoln got to tour the middle school to learn more about the transition to sixth grade, and those tours are led by our eighth grade web leaders, so that's that where everyone, everybody belongs. Mm -hmm web program so you have that again student leadership and welcoming in our, our incoming kids actually that same day was at uh, Lincoln Center getting to meet with the student ambassadors and they were um, super excited to talk about all the things that they were looking forward to a lot to do with um, not being in one classroom all day so they're looking forward to get to move through the building and navigating that and um, experiencing all the different content areas so of course our elementary teachers do an amazing job with all that content areas, but it's one of the things that's really fun for them is to go from classroom to classroom and see the different content area classrooms. We have a star in our midst here from the uh, Senior Center Spring Fashion Show, and Inspector Felton was part of that with the, at the Senior Center. So um, Taylor, so Taylor Marie's fashion, do so you want to say anything? I don't know if I know what that one is. Well, that, that's the name of, of the company. Her, her name is Peggy, ah. yeah. And she, she's been coming to the Senior Center for several years. Okay. Twice a year, a spring, and then we'll be doing it again in the fall. And it's a very fun event. We had almost 60 guests come to, come that day with a catered lunch. So it's, 
It's a lot of fun. It's a very fun day. Yeah, sounded like it. My calendar didn't let me get there, but I look forward to seeing it in the fall. And you had how many outfit changes? Uh, three. Three. All right. <laughs> As, so then I buy one. <laughs> right. Well, it's a good excuse to buy an outfit, right? Yeah, that last one, you just leave it on then and walk home. <laughs> <laughs> As always, you can follow us on social media, and we'll try to keep things updated and, and fresh with the social media. It's a great place to see what's going on and see uh, pictures of our staff and students doing amazing things. A couple of important dates. There's no school on Monday the 30th. We've got Memorial Day right around the corner. Last day of school, it's just, we're getting there June 8th, we're almost there, it's uh, amazing. And then graduation on the 9th, I've heard such amazing things about that commencement ceremony. So looking forward to getting out on the field with the our graduates. It seems like a, a very special thing to get to be a part of, so. And then as always, any materials are available on our website. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Next thing on our list are the consent items. And if you remember, consent items um, are things that come through each meeting that we don't need much discussion on, including bills payable, claims, and our staffing report. Do I have a motion for the approval of our consent items tonight? So moved. Thank you. Second. Thanks. Any discussion? <coughs> and all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. And then tonight, we do have many policies <laughs> for review. Um, so just a reminder, school district policy um, 208 requires policies under review to be placed on two consecutive school board meeting agendas for review and then comment by board members, staff, and community members. Um, on the third and subsequent meeting, the policies will go before the school board for approval. Um, do I have a motion? Oh, no. No motion, because they're just for review. Uh, Inspector Rush, do you have sure. any discussion on what the policy committee went over? Sure. There was a significant review of our kind of policies as a whole. Um, lots of them are just small tweaks to language um, and a little bit of cleanup. Um, if I can highlight um, just sort of two areas that had a little bit more significant change. Um, some of our school policies um, were pretty rigid in terms of who we defined inside a building could handle certain actions and we moved that around a little bit so that it, that is more of a district designee um, so that we have a little more flexibility and um, some of the duties of, and functions of a school. Um, and the other piece is we had um, kind of redefined protected class and made sure protected class in terms of harassment, bullying, um, policies within that kind of realm and sphere that rather than defining several individual student groups, um, we just sort of protected all students under an umbrella of protected class and defined that in our policies. Thank you. All right, moving on to the business items section. Um, we have two items for review. The first is um, approval for the unrequested leave resolution. And do I have a, do I do a motion first? Mm -hmm. Yeah, do I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, second? Second. Wonderful. Um, and I believe we have our uh, HR director, Joe Miltier, here for comments. Yeah, thank you, school board, Dr. Zambrino. So tonight on the agenda for you is the resolution to place one continuing contract teacher, physical education teacher on an unrequested leave of absence. The individual proposed to be placed on ULA did have 14 days from the last board meeting on April 25th to be able to request <coughs> a hearing from the school board. We have not heard from that individual staff member, so we are looking for uh, we have a recommendation for you tonight to move forward with that approval of that resolution. Great. Thank you. Board members, any discussion? All right, and since it's a resolution, we need the roll call. Roll call. Yeah, Emma said call rolled. <laughs> In Inspector Rush? Yes. Inspector Weber? Yes. Inspector Laliberti? Yes. Inspector Arendt? Yes. Inspector Felton? Yes. Inspector Walker? Yes. And Chair Diaz? Yes. That's seven yeas. Great. And then the next item, 
I'm looking for a motion to approve the 2022 and 2023 meal prices. Do you have a motion? So moved. Thank you. Second. Okay, thanks, Wendy. Um, and we have uh, Finance Director Brady Hoffman here for some comments on that. Yep, just a quick update. So each year the school board approves the meal prices uh, for the following school year. Um, so with things such as increases in wages, food costs, um, as well as how we compare to other districts um, and the viability of our food service program, we do have a slight increase that's being proposed in our meal prices for next year. So uh, we walked through this at the community of the whole as well. Um, so we're just looking for the school board to approve the rates for the following year. Thank you. Board members, any discussion? No. Um, we did talk a little bit about how this is a change um, as meals have been subsidized for the last two years. Um, and I'd like to kind of just initiate the reminder that if this is a hardship for any family, that I encourage them to apply for the district benefits. Absolutely. Great reminder. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Thank you. And that is it for the business items. Um, and moving on to our board member reports, any committee updates, or where we've seen a passion. And we'll start down here with Inspector Aaron. I have nothing tonight, Chair. Thank you. Monica. Um, the middle school play was this last weekend, um, and it was super fun. Um, the kids had some very interesting costumes, um, so hats off. I know we have a new um, costumes person um, helping out in our theater, and they were very creative. Um, thus, this summer, there were both, this summer, there will also be a juniors play and a community theater show, so would encourage all people um, to apply for that or to audition for that. It's a lot of fun. I did it the last two summers. And just this is our last meeting before graduation. So just congratulate, congratulations to all the graduates and best of luck wherever the path of life takes you. Um, I'm going to piggyback on graduation. Uh, my wife's and my oldest is on the doorstep of crossing that stage as well. Um, but more than anything, I want to express an enormous amount of gratitude to our district. Um, our own children have been in the district for their entire education and the transformative power of our school and how much of a positive impact that it, that has had on our children and our, and our life. Um, I'm just very thankful. So. Great. Uh, piggyback off of uh, the CSI Wonderland play, uh, my son and I went and saw it on Friday night. I agree, it was so much fun, lots of laughs, um, unexpected laughs, like I was hooting and hollering by myself and <laughs> the middle schoolers in front of me would turn around and look at me like a weird old lady, but I was like, did you not get that? That was hilarious. Um, so it was so much fun. I really appreciate those productions. Nikki? Speaking of weird old ladies. <laughs> <laughs> so after the stride for pride, I'm walking back to my car, crossing the street in front of the B&G, and a car comes along and stops and waves me, you know, to go across the street. This one yells out, Wow, wasn't that so nice that they let that old lady cross the street? And don't you deny it. <laughs> Are you, were you pointing this way? I wasn't there, I don't recall that. Oh, either. yeah, yeah. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Um, I would just like to give a huge thanks to the Schultz family um, for what they accomplished with Stride for Pride. And um, they do a, just a wonderful job. With that, there was a good turnout. There were three or four board members there just chitting, chat, chit chatting with people. And the darling kids that, that ran it was pretty impressive. But um, they've been doing this now 13 or 14, 14 years. 14 years. And um, I, I just want to say a huge thank you to the, the Schultz family and Cunahan family um, for your generosity, for your... Um, compassion for people who are not necessarily in the place to afford things for their kids. So thank you for that wonderful event. Yeah, great. 
Chris? Well, as you can tell from the superintendent update and all the other updates, <laughs> um, there's a lot going on. A lot has happened in the last two weeks um, that we're all trying to get as involved as, as possible with. Um, I just would like to point out the, the scholarship banquet. Um, as was noted earlier, it was just short of $500,000 in scholarships given out, which is just extraordinary. I mean, we've received calls from districts around the state saying, how do you do this? Do you have any tips for us you know, to get something like that going? So just want to give all the credit to the, uh, first of all, the scholarship winners and their families for working so hard, and then also to the uh, Educational Foundation. Um, it's just an amazing effort that goes on, and it means so much to the community. And So thank you. Mm -hmm. Last but not least, Wendy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I too want to give a huge thank thank you to the Schultz and Cunahan family for their stride for Packer Pride. And they did have a record amount of people there this year, over 150 people. So that was absolutely wonderful. We thank them for doing this and look forward to seeing them again next year. And I just, have, I just want to share uh, several items that are coming up within the next few weeks with the end of the school year coming up, uh, starting up here, um, as we've talked about, like with graduations, on Tuesday, June 7th, the Community Learning Center graduation at the auditorium in the high school. On Thursday, June 9th, the secondary building at the high, the high school, their graduation at six o'clock. Hopefully weather providing will be outside in the football field. And just for an information thing for Dr. Zambrino, <laughs> my graduation class back in the olden days, 1975, we were the first graduating class to have our, gra our graduation ceremony outside in the football field. Fun. We were the first ones that did that. And as long as I was bringing up my graduating class, we are planning um, a reunion coming up. Unfortunately, two years ago, due to the COVID, we did have to cancel our 45th class reunion, but we are going to be planning up another, hopefully, gathering in se on September 17th for the class of 1975. It will be held at the Croatian Hall. And since we're all turning 65 this year, we're calling it our Medicare ARP reunion. <laughs> So that's something to look forward to because we are having a very small gathering there at, at the Croatian Hall this Thursday evening at 6 o'clock to just start some of the, the get the final finalization of the plans that we're going to do for the gathering for our reunion. And also, on the same day as graduation on Thursday, June, June 9th, that will be our Employee Recognition Day breakfast, which will be held at the secondary building in the, at the high school. And we will be honoring staff members who have been with us for five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 25 years, 30 years. And we have one school board member who is celebrating her 35th year with our district, Laura Dozier. I know Laura and her family personally, so I'm so excited to congratulate her she is the only one on the 35-year list this year. So, Laura, thank you for everything that you do for our district. And then um, this week, Thursday, May 26th, <clears throat> Kaposia Education Center will be having their Apex Fun Run fundraiser, uh, which will be done by, by grade level starting at 9.30 in the morning and running until a little after 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So that's something to look forward to. If you see a lot of kids running around on the south end of town near Kaposia Education Center, it is their Apex, Apex fundraiser. And one thing for Lincoln Center, for the Lincoln Center students, um, this Friday, the 27th, is the last day that students can check out library materials from their school. So if students want to get a library book or reading materials, whatever they can get from their library, you have to get them checked out by Friday. And then those materials have to be returned to the library 
<clears throat> starting on from May 31st through June 8th. So make sure kids check them out, read them, have fun with them. But then remember, starting next week, please start returning them back to school. And just as a reminder to all families, our Kids' Choice program registration is open. If families are interested in signing up the kids for Kids' Choice for either the summer programs or they're already taking registrations, for the fall starting in September when the new school year starts. So keep that in mind if you want to get into Kids Choice. You can look on our website or contact um, Gene Zender with, with Community Education can answer all your questions regarding Kids Choice. So thank you and have a nice holiday, Memorial Weekend coming up. As you know, the South St. Paul City does hold a Memorial Day parade in the morning, which ends up at the Oak Hill Cemetery on 15th Avenue. So we want to thank and honor all those citizens who have defended our country. So thank you very much. So that is it for our agenda tonight. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn our Monday, May 23rd, 2022 meeting. So moved. Second. Thanks. Any discussion? That motion carries, and the meeting is adjourned at 701, 701. 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. On the dot. Thanks so much.